the Straw Family Farm. I'm Christy. As you probably know, RJ is at the rodeo. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, let's just get right on into it. We'll start within the chapel. We're going to say Palms 32 for today. And it is For day and night, your hand was heavy on me. My strength was set as the heat of summer. So, yeah. Uh, ugh. <laughs> the heat of summer is upon us. So, um, and if you see me snacking, I took the liberty of freezing some fruit. Uh, it's just blueberries, raspberries, I think, and strawberries. So, um, yeah. It is what it is, but I am, for the summer, it's good to have them frozen. Okay, so I'm just saying. <laughs> so, they're supposed to be cooling me down, but hot. We haven't put the air conditioners in. We've been so busy. So let's move right on into barn in the barn stalls. Um, Miss Minnie is learning to be a big cow. Uh, she definitely thinks she's a dog. Not going to lie. Uh, if you leave dog food down, she'll eat it. If you leave her food down, Randall eats with her. Um, she goes outside and plays. She likes to buck and play, especially the cool of the evening right now. Um, it's probably 8.30. Um, and she's out having her little frolic. <laughs> so, yep. Um, anyway, uh, most of the stuff is going really good. Um, the lambs aren't even small anymore. They're huge. Uh, cattle's doing good. Um, just normal, normal, to be honest with you. Um, is what it is. Just a quieter summer after lambing. Um, we are going to start shearing, but every time RJ gets a chance to shear, it is. It's only been the last week that it's been hot, and up until then it was pouring rain every two, three days. So until their fleece dries out, you can't shear them. So we're struggling with that. Um, it'll get done, though. They can't make it through the heat without shearing. Um, I think that's it. And the barn stalls really summer doesn't have a whole lot we've got ducks and chickens um, one of the ducks hatched out some duck eggs the goose is sitting on eggs but she gets up and leaves them in the night so I think they get cold I don't know all day long in the heat though she'll sit on them <laughs> I don't even know that they're fertile that's the bad part is I don't even know if they're fertile we don't even know who's a female and a male I know that um, Sam the gray one is always wanting to set and she's the one laying the eggs so she is definitely female i don't know what the white one is it, it is what it is so anyway um i was hoping for geese i think they're cute uh all right in the yarn farm um we're doing tours by appointment only still there's a lot going on in the farm but we still haven't opened up just to the public yet and please keep in mind that that is because of RJ um, he has health issues and he is high risk so we really don't want him to do it and in the summer heat he can't cowboy with his mask on it just because of his lungs and his asthma he can't breathe and he has to have that fresh air so we're just kind of unfortunately we're playing it real safe uh, let's see what else anything else not really not really <laughs> as I'm saying it's, it's kind of quiet let's go on to in the field oh no I forgot mending fences we fixed we literally have fixed fence um, worked on a few things a couple of posts that have brought it out uh, got new posts got the new fence line out on the south end of the sheep pasture uh, put the new fencing up, well, the cattle panel fencing is up because Gordy keeps breaking in there. But I was short T-posts, so it's not good. I've got to go back and realign T-posts. I picked the other T-posts up, and they're out there now. But, yeah, I ha get so, I only get so much done, and then I get hot. So, it is what it is. And I'm drinking lots of water and doing all the things I should. Eating frozen fruit, you know. But... It just takes a toll on you. The heat zaps your your energy level, so and it makes you sweat a lot. <laughs> I was sweating so earlier, so much earlier today. 
uh, Minnie was in getting her bottle and she was like licking my leg like I'm her salt lick. I'm like, your salt licks out the back door. Go suck on it, you know? <laughs> it was funny. Um, all right, in the fields. Everybody knows that we're doing the garden. If you follow us on Facebook, you saw the tiny house shell is up. The door's in place, three skylights are in place, and the entire shell is up. So now we're gonna start with the floor because we were not doing a concrete pad. We're gonna do an earthen floor. So um, I needed to see how it leveled up and stuff. So yeah, it's good though. I'm happy with it and it's cool in there um, just because of the shade and it's white. So um, I might try and pop some pictures on the end of this. No, I won't because I already deleted them. They're on Facebook. So if you follow us on Facebook, you saw them. Okay, I'm sorry. Not very efficient today. <laughs> so, um, let's see what else. The tiny house, like I said, tiny house went up. It went up in one day. They had four guys out here real quick, and they knocked it out like nothing. Um, most of the stuff that's going on is going to be in the farmhouse. So I'm just going to skip right to it because we haven't put out a video in a while. I have been working. A lot of hours matter of fact this Friday Saturday Sunday Monday is my first stretch off that I'm supposed to have I have actually been working other places um, for other people and just been busy so um, I'm looking to slow down it's first June I want to slow down and get back focused on this farm uh, and not necessarily focus focus because my job I still have my phones here I just want it to get back to normal so um, and when it's back to normal I pull a 48 hour shift all in one block from Tuesday to Thursday 3 to 3 and then I'm done for the week other than taking phone calls handling emergencies medical emergencies um, people not showing up or something like that and that's it so call in schedules I got it um anyway so the other thing the other big thing that happened is we invested or i invested in a new trailer it's kind of a long story but i'm going to tell you how it went y'all know i believe in god winks and there's two that happened within days of each other so First, RJ and I have been talking about a different trailer because of we use a stock trailer to haul everything. He can only haul three horses in there long distance, four short distance. It just gets too crowded if you put him more in there. Um, so we were looking at getting a little bit bigger one, one for just for rodeo and not for his cowboy work, not for his when he goes cowboy work and he still takes a stock trailer. And I had wanted one. I said, if we're going to do it, I'm sorry, I got a tick and I'm allergic to them and so it's itching and I'm just trying to, <coughs> so, um, anyway, uh, I wanted something that had all the convenience I wanted from now on. This is like the last trailer I'm ever going to buy. I said, I wanted a tack room, a, a decent sized tack room because with a stock trailer, you saddle the horses and the horses carry their own saddles with it getting hot like this. We try to jerk them off and put them in the back seat, but the back seat only fits two real safely, and he rides three horses. So, yeah, um, we just want comfort for them. And I told RJ, I said it'd be nice not only just to have a, a decent sized tack room and a bigger trailer. I said, you know, there's some out there with living quarters, and I said I don't want big fancy. Now they have them with big RV, ten thousand dollar kitchens and and bedrooms in them and i just want a, a small seating area um where rj could sleep if he had to he's um sometimes been caught in some places that team ropings that last till four in the morning and he's got to be back there at eight well by the time he drives home and then drives back that kills his whole time he didn't get any sleep so he randall quit um he uh has had instance where he's stayed in other people's trailers that do have living quarters you know um he'll curl up on the floor and just go to sleep there 
and I said it would be something just minimal. And he had been looking, and I told him what I wanted to spend, and he says, Mom, I'm just not finding it in our price range. He says, they just, they're real proud of the living quarters, and they build them up so much that it makes it like a little house, you know. And I just want a room with air conditioning, throw an air mattress in there, you know, and in the winter, a little heater, you know. I want it fancy for my horses, though. <laughs> I'm so backwards, aren't I? Horses come first, people. I'll oh, just give him an air mattress. <laughs> so anyway, uh, a friend of a friend had one, and they knew that I was looking for one, and so they said, hey, come look at this one. Number one, it was more than I wanted to spend. Number two, it again was a bigger living quarter type thing, and it was supposed to be a four-horse slant. So I... Uh, went over and looked at it, knowing full well that being more than I want to spend, ooh, big cow getting after Minnie. I will be right back. Gotta pause you. Okay, I'm back. Um, the big cows outside push Minnie around, and she thinks she's a big cow. She doesn't know that she's not. So she's already back in the house. She didn't come say hi? No? All right. And, of course, Randall's her buddy, so now he's going to be all over, and she doesn't want him all over. She wants the cows, and... Oh, anyway, come in and say hi. No, fine, be spoiled. Um, where was I? Oh, we went to look at that trailer. And again, we got over there. It was supposed to be a four horse slant. And what they had done is, um, Randall, stop. <sighs> Go. He, what they had done quit now he's starting to nip me because he thinks he can hurt me to go wherever he wants um anyway please remember randall is just he's not even a year old he's smart but he thinks he can make you do what he wants i'm not going anywhere uh anyway so i went over there not only was it and rj and i had talked we didn't want anything smaller than a four horse because sometimes he pulls four horses um and when we got over there, they had modified the living quarters to recess the fridge in, and it had pushed out into where the horses go, essentially making that first horse stall not usable. So it was a four horse slant, but you couldn't use it because they had made this big cutout, pushed the fridge back in there, and then framed it out. Um, you could use it for storage, but I wanted a tack room. I didn't. I didn't. I don't want the tack in with the horses and all that and tired of having to trek it everywhere you know just get it room get a room put it in there it stays RJ can saddle at the trailer go and do unsaddle at the trailer here at the house you know he doesn't have to um hey 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 Minnie what is with they're throwing fits they're like children uh anyway so I, uh, Randall, stop. Those two are driving me crazy when they're together. Um, anyway, so there was no tack room, not like I wanted. Um, it was converted down to a three horse instead of a four horse, which I didn't want that. And the living quarters were massive and they wanted twice as much as I wanted to spend. So I told him, I said, no, I'm just not really interested. And, uh, but there was another one sitting right beside it. And I said, well, what's with that one over there? And they said, oh, it's for sale, but it's been for sale for a few years. It's just been sitting there. And I said, well, let me look at that one. And I went over and it was a five horse slant, a little bigger than I wanted. It has a water tank in back so that my horses stay on our water. When you travel with horses, you run the risk of giving them diarrhea because water is different. If you travel, you know that from city to state to wherever, when you go on vacation, you know, sometimes the water messes with you. Um, so it's the same with horses. Well, it's got a water tank and then a small little area you can hang bridles right there with the water. And what it is, is you can take your bridle off, put your halters there, and water them all at the same time. 
And so that's cute, right? And it's got five horse slant, all with their own hay manger. So they can feed, they all have their own window. You can open the windows you need. Um, it's got a trap door so you can scoot out the side if you need to. That all looked good. And I was like, oh, this is pretty impressive. I said, ah, but I kind of want it with, you know, a bigger tack room. And they said, oh no, come up here to this. The whole side of the trailer under those hay mangers is a big storage area. Then there is a tack room with these two big stands for eight saddles. There is a rack for, I think, 10 blankets. And then there's all these hooks for you to put your actual tack on. You don't have to use the ones in the back stall. And I'm going, okay, now you've got my attention. And they said, but that's not all. I said, well, what's in the nose of it? Because it's a gooseneck. So I was like, well, what's in the nose? So we opened the other door. It's perfect. It just has carpet. And it's just like that blue indoor, outdoor weather carpet. It has an air conditioner. It has a plug-in for a small heater. It doesn't have the heater with it, but you just buy a small electric heater. And then there's a, a bench and you step up on the bench and you can get up in the nose, which is perfect to put an air mattress up there. There's no TV, there's no refrigerator, there's no anything. Now the reason that we don't mind that is RJ has a small college fridge in his room that he doesn't use anymore. He used it when he first got it, but now he's like older and he's like, I'll just walk out to the kitchen. <laughs> so, and he also has a microwave. So we could put those in there and plug them in when he's not using the heater. So he could have a small fridge in there. Um, I just have to make a square frame and mount it to the floor so that the fridge doesn't slide. Plug it in and it's good. Uh, I thought, well, it's a bigger trailer. These people are going to want a mint for it. Because I knew what they wanted for the one that was converted down to a three horse. And I said, well, so what's the asking price on this? And they hit exactly on the number that RJ and I had discussed that we wanted to give for a new trailer. I said, oh, really? So I talked to the guy and I said, let me see what I can work out. I went and talked to my banker. And she worked it up and she said, I'm going to tell you right now, because with trailers, there's not like a Kelly Blue Book. They comparison shop them. That's how they finance them. She says, right now, that deal that you're getting is only half the value of the trailer. I said, okay, cool. So, um, yeah, I got it done in a day and a half. I would have had it done faster than that, but I couldn't physically get there. I was at work. So... Thursday, I went, signed all the paperwork, picked up the check. Friday, RJ and I were supposed to go over and um, pick up the trailer, bring it home, clean it out, and get it ready to go. We looked at the tires. They looked fine. Now, keep in mind, the guy told me it's been sitting for two years. Like, he had to clean out clothes that his kids left in there. When they left and went for college, they didn't go to the same college, and they can't split the trailer and it was just too big for only one of them to take horses. So they downsized the smaller trailers, two smaller trailers, and we're going to sell this one to pay for the two. Well, it had been two years and they hadn't been able to sell it. Nobody wants a five horse. This thing is 40 feet long, okay? It is essentially as long as a tiny house. Um, no, it's twice as long as a tiny house. Um, so, yeah, it's a huge rig. And uh, so... I go over there, RJ and I had our Friday planned out, the tiny house was supposed to go in, the guys would be here doing construction, I was supposed to go over, pick up that trailer, come back, and I was supposed to be in the front yard just working on it, cleaning it out, it had old hay in the manger, and it's two years old hay, so it would have been moldy, and if the horses ate it, it would have made them sick, and so I was scrubbing it down, there was still poop in it from other horses, and I don't like um, another scent from, our horse, from those horses in there. So, you know, just little things. I need to sweep out the tack room and stuff. Stuff that it's been sitting for two years. So, um, that's what I was supposed to do. Well, it turns out the farrier, um, he had to reschedule. Monday, he calls and says, hey, I'm going to come by today. So, we had horses we had to shoe. Okay, so we get the horses lined up, tied up. Tell Rocky we're going to go 
get this trailer, we'll be right back. He says, okay. So, um, the construction guys showed up before we left, back the trailer with all that stuff out of the barn down there. They got to work. We told them, if you need anything, text or call. We'll take care of it, you know, by phone best we can. Uh, we'll be right back. It's a 20 minute drive over, 20 minute drive back. That's it. And we only had like 10 minutes worth of business. Literally, it was him signing the paperwork and me giving him the check. And then when I got home, I had the next day to take it to the bank or whatever. Okay. So we get over there and we get hooked up to the trailer. Everything's going fine. I get the paperwork done. RJ and I head out. Um, now, RJ has driven a rig that big before. When he hauls with his friends, they trade off driving. So he's driven other people's big rigs. So that's why I wanted him to drive it. I knew I could do it on a straightaway, but there's some curves and it doesn't handle the same. And I'm gonna have to relearn because it's a fifth wheel. It connects differently to the truck. It connects at top. Everything we've done was bumper pull. It handles totally different. And I just needed to get it home. Then we can worry about all that. So we don't get, we leave that guy's house and we don't get 10 miles down the road. We blow a tire. They looked good. We kicked them. We all said, and he had even told me there's a brand new spare on it. If one of these, you know, turns out to be shady, there's a brand new spare on it. I said, oh, he says, it's never even been on the ground. I said, okay, cool. Right? So we blow the first tire. The trailer's empty and it's double axle. So I told RJ, I said, we're on a shady part. There's no place to pull off. There's no shoulder. It's up and down like this and kind of curvy. So I said, let's just keep going. I, I think it'll be okay. We threw all the tread off of it, but the tire was kind of still there. Well, the tire on the back axle couldn't handle the trailer weight without that other tire. And it started to go flat too. So we have to stop in the middle of the road. No shoulder, no anything. And the first thing it hits us is, we don't have a trailer jack. Trailers don't come with one. You have to purchase them. So the jack belonged to that man that sold me the trailer. And they can be expensive. I, nobody expects them to go with the trailers. Even when you buy one brand spanking new from the showroom floor, they don't come with a jack. Your truck jack should be enough to jack it up. Okay, so RJ's truck is a one ton. <laughs> We have a 40 foot trailer on all of it. It's empty. So there's no real weight weight in it, which is a good thing. So, um, we stop, we grab the brand new spare and we put it on the back axle and we make it home. Okay. So now we're running behind on the way home. I called the, uh, what do you call it? The tire guy, Tim, it's his name. And I said, hey, I need four new tires. <laughs> Two, I know are bad. I said, just, it's supposed to be a brand new spare. I told him the deal. He says, bring it up to me at one o'clock. We'll get four all around on it. It'll be good. So I said, okay, keep me the good spare though. Remember which one it is so that we can put it all back on and check it out for me. Make sure it's as good as they say. He says, okay. So, RJ, now I'm out here with the farrier. I've got the construction going on. I said, RJ, I shot his whole day. All he was supposed to do was spend 40 minutes with me going to get that trailer and bring it back. I said, son, I got too much going on. Can you please take this trailer to Tim or you're not going to be able to use it tomorrow? And he needed it today. And uh, he says, sure, I can do that. They get up there and I get this phone call. And Tim asked me if I wanted the good news or the bad news. And of course me, I'm like, start with the good news. Just give me the good news. I'm exhausted. Give me the good news. So he goes, y'all are blessed to have gotten this trailer to me. I put a brand new tire on that back. And that's what I was told. I said, okay, take my blessings, right? I said, so what's the bad news? He goes, you better buy five tires or you're not walking, you're not going to drive out of here with a spare. And I said, what do you mean? He says, the whole inside of your spare is dry rotted. 
He says, it's a brand new tire, but it hasn't been used and rubber doesn't last forever. So he says, I don't even know how old that tire is. He says, but yeah, never been on the ground. I can agree with, but still no good. So I bought five new tires got it home. Now the first God wink, as you know, was us finding the trailer because I didn't go to look at that one. I went to find one and, and we found the perfect one. That's the thing. And when RJ and I were driving home, we were talking about it and I said, this is the last trailer I'm ever going to buy. I I'm done buying trailers. And I said, I will repair on this one. We'll fix this one. Um, sorry, sweat's getting in my eyes. Uh, but I'm not going to buy. And he says, well, honestly, mom, he said, if you think about it that way, he said, I'll probably be using it to haul your grandchildren around in if I ever have any. And I said, that's true. Because he'll take one or two horses. His children will fill the others. Five horses is probably the max that a family takes. So, um, that's cool. You know, we're talking about that. And I'm like, okay, we got it. So, the first God wink is that we found the trailer at all. In our price range way below value, amazing trailer, good condition. If you're on Facebook, again, we posted a whole little thing of it. I cleaned it out when it got home, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so the second God wink is that RJ needed to take that trailer because he was taking the horses three and a half to four hours away today. And he says, I really could use to use that trailer, mom. It's hot, it's muggy. And if those horses have to ride that long with, sorry, I have an itch, um, with their saddles and stuff on, they're not going to be good. They're going to get hot and sweaty before I even get there. They just won't stand as good a chance. He says, I really, really want to take that Saturday. I said, okay, I can get it cleaned out. I can get it done. No problem. So as we're driving home, him and I also discussed this. If those tires hadn't gone flat, he would have been God knows where with no jack because we didn't think about it. I went and bought one yesterday and put in it before he left. The stands, the jack, everything. He's set. He can jack it up. It's good. Um, then we bought the tires, but he wouldn't have even had a decent spare. And because one blew, the others would have blown. So, yeah, that was the second God wink. So, yesterday we got it home. Randall, she's not a chew toy. Cows don't chew on dogs, but dogs chew on cows. And they don't know how to play together. Um, anyway, so the second God wink was that we took the time to put, you know, five new tires on it. And then RJ looks at me and goes, well, now we don't need the jack because we got good tires. <laughs> I was like, son, you never know when you're going to run something over or when you're going to have to put that on, you know. And at least it happened when we didn't have horses in there. He would have been fully loaded down and with tack and everything, the horses. And he would have had to unload all those horses on the side of the road if that had happened. So we are definitely feeling very blessed that that didn't go wrong. It could have. It could have gone so wrong, but it didn't. And that is just a God wink, you know? Kind of him giving me that, hey, I got you. So um, he covers us a lot, let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> so yesterday I spent the time, the guys got the tiny house done in a day, uh, got them out of here because it was getting hot. They worked their butts off. It was amazing. Um, and then I got the trailer, all the mats taken out, scrubbed everything down in the horse part, got the mats, got it dried out, got the floor mats back in. I got pine shavings in there, okay, so that, that it can be easily cleaned out and gone on. Um, somebody had used hay as bedding, so there was hay all over everything. And I don't like hay because if the horses, like, go to nibbling on it, it can give them colic. So, um... Anyway, we got that done. I do have to find one screen. Apparently, the guy had a horse that liked to put his nose up under and, and tore the screen. We just put it in a stall that we're not using. We put it in the very back. Window wasn't even open. Not a big deal. So, um, yeah. We haven't tested the water tank yet. 
I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't take time to fill it up. Um, it was, we got it yesterday. It was probably 8.30 by the time I got everything done. Got done with a horse farrier. Got, I'm sorry, I'm just itchy. Uh, got the guys out of here with that. Got it all closed back up because we'd taken down part of the cattle panels so they could just cut through instead of walking the whole length of it. Um, Randall! He, he likes to try and like wrestle her like a dog and he puts his mouth over her neck and I get onto him. That's what I'm yelling his name for. Um, and that's when I tell him he's, she's not a chew toy. Uh, so anyway, got it, got the farrier gone, got the house done, and then I got to do the trailer. And like I said, it was probably 8.30 or so this time of night when I got done. Um, but it was ready for him in the morning. And we had the truck hook up, hooked up to it. We've juggled the parking. We know where it can be parked. Uh, so it is going to take up quite a bit in our driveway, but it's okay. Um, it's actually really good. So we've had all of that going on and RJ has not missed a rodeo since they started back up. He hasn't missed a day of work with his uncle. I've been working overtime. Um, the house, the tiny house going up, the trailer, just normal everyday routine here. Minnie's still being fed on a bottle twice a day. So, and she, she goes out to play more and she, she grazes grass, she eats hay. Um, she has her feed, her and Randall trade off. I, is she, when she gets into the dog food, it messes with her tummy and I have to, um, it takes her a day to get back straightened out. So we really have to watch that. That's the only thing. Um, but other than that, that is all that's been going on here. It's been a whirlwind, <laughs> unfortunately. So, but fortunately, because a lot of good things are happening. So, and RJ is super proud of that trailer. He wouldn't admit it. I was super excited because I got number one, exactly what I wanted, exactly the right price. And it was just sitting there. It wasn't even the one I went to look for. So, yeah. Definite God winking that. And then the whole tire thing, like I said, that was God looking out for RJ. Because if he'd have been four hours away and all those tires would have started blowing, he wouldn't have had a prayer in the world of getting that thing anywhere. So, especially since it's the weekend. So, anyway. Uh, other than that, there hasn't been a whole lot going on. I'm still doing my square of the month. Uh, crochet. I'm working on my bedspread. I don't know if I told you all about that. I'll probably cover it in another podcast because I just, I'm not going at my crochet is out my car because I've been working so much. I've been taking it with me. But I'm being lazy. I'm literally sitting here eating frozen fruit, talking to you guys. And I am done for the day. So, uh, but yeah, it's coming together, doing a good thing. If you want to see the pictures on Facebook, go to the Straw Family Farm. The trailer has its own thing. And there's a couple of posts that are all mixed up. But I sorted them out last night late and posted, this is a trailer, this is a tiny house. So, um, yeah, you can go check those out. I hope to get the camera out to that trailer and give you a tour of it. Because it honestly is amazing. And I'm going to put a blow up or a foam mattress in the nose of it. And like I said, it's got AC. I've got the generator is out here. We don't use it that often. It's, it's just a small one. It's an emergency generator. It's not a huge one, but it'll be enough for that little trailer to turn the AC on, the electric on for heat if he needs it. So I've got the spark plug and the oil because we haven't started it in probably two years. The weather hasn't been bad enough for us to need it. Um, so we will, get that going and get it put on the truck the trailer now the only thing that it, i'm adamant about and i'll have to do it before winter is i want to find they have a hay rack up on top of the trailer and a ladder you climb up put your hay up there you know well in the winter it's going to get wet um even in the summer it can get you know moisture 
um, from condensation from you know the, the morning dew so I'm gonna get what's called a pod and if you travel at all it's, it's kind of the same thing as one of those car pods that go on top of your car only a little bit thicker <laughs> and so I've already got a guy lined up to take the rack off put the pod up there um, I just have to find the pod and I'm trying to not break the bank because I've spent money doing the tiny house doing the trailer you know way too much in such a short period of time and if you're a farmer you understand that when you spend big lumps in a short period of time it kind of leaves you crunching okay so but everything worked out just that way and I know that God will take care of it but if I can find a wrecked trailer that had a pod on it that person will sell me that pod because it's the only money they're going to get out of it I went and insured mine just saying so if I can find a wrecked one I would rather get you know not the pod wrecked but if the trailer has been wrecked and the pod is good I'll buy that pod a brand new one is super expensive for horse shows because they're big to hold you know three to four 66 pound bales of hay so and some of them stack too deep so if you can get one that holds four you can put eight bales up there well just to give you an idea um, those are 66 pounds if you times that by eight it's a lot of weight and hay so um, I don't think I need that big of a pod but shopping used I'll take what I can get and I'll make it work so and that's gonna be the first thing done other than the blow-up mattress I told him I'd get him a mattress because this summer is gonna be hot he already knows there's two rodeos that he's gonna have to stay in that thing for sorry that's work um, so I, uh, I, uh, will get everything done. It just takes time and I have to prioritize. That pot is the number one thing. The blow up mattress is something that just for him to have, I told him, I said, you know what, you can take our camp camping gear and put in there. Then he'll have a little two burner stove, a little propane burning stove, and then he'll have sleeping bags, utensils, everything. We've got a little camping box and I'm literally going to just put it in there. There's silverware, there's foil, there's everything in that box. So then with the little grill, I mean, there's even a frying pan in that camping box. There's egg holders, so he can do whatever. Um, but the camping gear is probably what's going to start out in there. And it's got a bench for him to come in where there's air, AC. Uh, the camping table holds up. I mean, the camping box. The things lift up. My grandfather made it. I'll have to show you a tour of that. That is awesome. You guys would love that. But anyway, um, it flips up and there's two posts and it becomes a, a table. So he could put that table right in front of the bench, put it away when he's traveling, pull it out when he needs it, eat dinner, do whatever. So set his phone up there and watch YouTube if he wanted to. So anyway, um, any, we got lucky, okay? God took care of it. He knew what we needed, knew what we were doing, and he took care of it. So I'm going to get out of here. I've rambled on enough. Go check out Facebook and see the um, albums of those or the posts. I think I'm so Facebook efficient, aren't I? Uh, anyway, so yeah, go check it out see what you think leave us a comment message I am going to try and get you a tour and I'm definitely going to have to do that camping box because those are so easy to build they're amazing and yes it's handmade so I will get off of here and I will talk to you guys later have a good one stay cool drink lots of water hydrate eat frozen fruit it's good healthy for you too no sugar yeah RJ dumps sugar on his I don't have a good one guys check you later